Hello children. So today in the chapter pronoun we are going to discuss uh, one such pronoun which you know which are really at times very confusing. That means we I am talking about reflexive pronoun and emphatic pronoun, right? So these two pronouns, the same words, you know, at times is used as reflexive pronoun, and at some other time it is used as emphatic pronoun. So this first we need to understand, and then we need to understand. That from reflexive pronoun, what type of questions are asked in concrete exams like NBA and your CLAT exams? Is that clear, children? So today, once again, I repeat myself. That is, in today's lecture, in the chapter of pronoun, we are going to take on such two types, which are really very confusing. Students get confused. They cannot differentiate between reflexive pronoun and emphatic pronoun because the same words are used as reflexive pronoun. as well as emphatic pronoun and at the same time i would let you know that reflexive pronoun what kind of what what type of verbs are there which takes reflexive pronoun after them is that clear so today uh, in the chapter today in the chapter we are going to see reflexive pronoun and emphatic pronoun reflexive and emphatic Fine, children. So first, let us understand which words are called the reflexive pronoun or emphatic pronoun. After that, I will tell you the difference. You know, from first person singular number, we have myself. So these words, myself, can be used as reflexive as well as it can be used as emphatic. From we first person plural number, we get ourselves. It is plural. That's why it is ourselves. For second person, it could be singular as well as plural. For singular, we have yourself, and for plural, we have yourselves. For he, we have himself. For she, we have herself. For it, we have itself. For they, we have themselves. It will be themselves because it is plural. And for one, we have oneself. Is that clear? So these words, myself, ourself, yourself, yourself, himself, herself, itself, themselves, oneself. These these words can be reflexive as well as emphatic, right? Depending upon how they are used. So first, I am going to discuss a reflexive pronoun. Is that clear? That's fine. Now, before I explain the meaning of reflexive pronoun, you just tell me what do you understand the meaning of reflect. If you understand the meaning of reflect, you would understand the meaning of reflexive pronoun. So the meaning of reflect, you know, suppose if I have a ball in my hand and this is the classroom, so if I throw the ball against the this opposite wall uh, in front of this wall. Wall, the ball will get bounced back to me. It means it will get reflected to me. It will come back to me. So, if you understand this, the meaning of uh, the reflected or reflexive. If you understand the meaning of reflect, you will understand the meaning of the reflexive. Once again, I tell you what is the meaning of reflect, reflexive, or reflect. You know, suppose when a subject is there and a subject performs some action. so if the effect of the actions performed by the subject if it is reflected back to subject if it bounces back to subject if it comes back to subject then it is called reflexive pronoun is that clear once again in p what is that reflexive pronoun suppose the subject has performed some action and the result of the action done performed by the subject gets back to subject it is reflected back to subject it bounces back to subject then that that is called reflexive you listen how we can find if the action performed by subject gets reflected back to subject fine what i have written i have written if the action performed by subject gets reflected back to subject in 
that case that is called reflexive phenomenon let us example understand once uh, let us understand one example he hurt himself see the sentence he hurt himself and means here subject has done something whatever by mistake so the whatever the subject has done the effect of the done subject it has come back to subject only here the subject has not hurt subject didn't hurt anybody else he only he hurt himself only he got he got hurt right he got hurt himself so here the effect of the action done got back to got back to subject she ruined herself ruined herself means she here the subject is she here she ruined herself here something she has done but the things you know here herself and she persons are same even this here subject and this object are the same person so here the thing which was done by the subject you know is the effect has gone on herself only so she is the only sufferer here in this case when when pronouns are used in this way it is called reflexive is that clear so this is called reflexive now i am going to tell you that you know there are some there are some verbs which are transitive and what do you understand by meaning of transitive so transitive verb always takes object but in those sentences when the objects are not there so we have to use reflexive pronoun because in that case a reflexive pronoun works as object is that clear what did i say i said that there are certain of verb those verbs are transitive verb that means transitive verb always takes object but when object is not there so in that case we have to use reflexive pronoun and the reflexive pronoun becomes the object right so let us see that what are those verbs if those verbs are there you will have to use reflexive pronoun with those verbs because those verbs are transitive verb have you understood children just now i have explained what is the meaning of reflexive pronoun now i am going to tell you that when are you supposed to use reflexive pronoun that means once again i am telling you children that there are verbs transitive verbs that means it it takes object but when object is not there so that reflexive pronoun will work as object so what are those verbs if those verbs come you will have to use those reflexive pronoun so first is absent next avail next adapt next adjust next apply next acquire see these all were starting with a that's why it's easy for you to remember absent avail adapt adjust apply acquire and then exert and then enjoy and then pride and then resign and then revenge so children if these verbs are there in a sentence so these verbs will certainly take reflexive pronoun right because these verbs are actually transitive verb and here they do not take object that means we have to use a reflexive pronoun and that reflexive pronoun works as object what are these verbs let us look uh, let us have a look once again at these verbs absent avail adapt adjust apply acquire exert enjoy try resign revenge now let us see we should avail ourselves of the opportunity see he has seen the word avail is there which is in the list and that's why we have to use this reflexive pronoun ourselves 
and this is our sir is actually the object fine so this is one example next i absented myself from the meeting see here children here it is absented right this verb is in this list that means you have to use this reflexive form here it is the reflexive form and here it is the object he revenge himself upon her see here children here this verb revenge is there revenge this is in this list you know and that's why you will take reflexive form so here is the reflexive fine is that clear let's see one more they enjoyed themselves in the party now here this enjoy what is there and which is in the list you know which is in the list it is there i have written yes it is there enjoy and that's why this a reflexive form of verb pronoun we have to use is that clear once again i am telling you first what did i mean to understand i mean you understand the meaning of reflexive pronoun then i told you that there are certain transitive verb and those verbs takes object the meaning of transitive verbs are those verbs which take objects but in when objects are not there so this reflexive pronoun acts as object now what are those verbs that if those verbs are there in a sentence you will have to use you will use those reflexive pronoun so these are the verbs absent away adapt adjust apply avoid exert enjoy try design revenge is that clear now i'm going to tell you children what now this reflexive pronoun we have understood now i will tell you emphatic pronoun the words are same now what is this emphatic pronoun this c emphatic pronoun you know emphatic pronoun is used for emphasis emphasis we when we need to give emphasis to the subject right we when we need to make the subject prominent then we use the emphatic pronoun right when we need to make the subject as more important and we need to put more emphasis then we use the emphatic pronoun suppose and emphatic pronoun is placed immediately after subject he himself he himself found the solution see here it is himself here it is emphatic right because it is telling that this man this person he found the solution alone without taking the help of other person she herself Herself solved the sum. See here, children. Yeah, herself, you know, is emphatic because it is telling about subject that this person, this she, solved the sum without taking the help from other person. I myself do all my work. So here, this I. Is here this myself is used because it is putting emphasis on this subject because here subject is doing the work without taking the help of any other person. Is that clear? So this is emphatic. Now even from emphatic, you know, some question comes in the competitive exam. Oh, what are those questions? So now having understood this emphatic pronoun, we are going to see that what problems comes from the emphatic pronoun. Sorry, I have to do this. what problems comes in the emphatic pronoun in the competitive exams you know many times people say while giving the introduction they myself you know roy kumar so this is wrong you can never say myself roy kumar this is absolutely wrong right this myself either it will be used as emphatic or reflexive it can never be the subject right so some people say while giving introduction that myself roy kumar this is 
is absolutely wrong. You cannot say. You will have to say, I am going to run. Fine. Sometimes you know say himself has done the work. Again, it is absolutely wrong. Here you cannot write himself has done the work. You will have to write he has done the work. Understood children? So what have we understood just now? We have understood first what is reflexive pronoun. Then we have seen what type of question comes in the competitive exam from reflexive pronoun. Then we have seen emphatic pronoun. And then we have also seen what type of question comes from the emphatic pronoun. Is that clear? Now we will see one more type of you know, pronoun which is very you know, bit tough. And first we will understand it. And then we will see it in the perspective of competitive exams. That is relative pronoun. See, next topic from the pronoun, next kind of pronoun which from where the question comes in the exam is, you know, relative pronoun. Now, what are those relative pronouns? From where first we need to understand the relative pronoun, right? The words relative pronoun, you know, they work here as two. They do the double, uh, means a double role. They play the dual function. One, they are pronoun and the other is relative that because you know they combine two sentences also they relate what are those words those words are who whom whose and which and that and sometimes what is also these are relative pronouns so who whom whose they are exclusively used for the human being Find who is nominative case which is equivalent to me, whom is optative case which is equivalent to his, him, and who is possessive case which is equivalent to his. Once again understand what are we going to do? We are going to study relative pronoun. What are relative pronoun? The relative pronoun are those pronoun which are pronoun in themselves and they also relate. That means they also join to sentences that means they also work as a characters. What are those related pronouns? Who, whom, whose? So who, whom, whose? These are used for the human beings. And out of these three, who is is a nominative case which is equivalent to he, whom is objective case which is equivalent to him, and whose is possessive case which is equivalent to his. And these, which, that, and what these are used for, you know, non-living things. Non-living things and even for animals. Fine. They could all mean for nominative case, objective case, and possessive case. Is that clear? Now I tell you some of the examples. This is the boy who helped me. See here. So this is a relative. Fine. A relative pronoun. And here, why have we used who? Because here, this is the boy. This is the boy who helped me. That means he helped me. Fine? And that's why. And here, this is related pronoun. And this one is called antecedent. These things I have taught you in adjective clause. Actually, when we use sentence like this, they are actually adjective clause. So here, this word is called antecedent. Which is qualified. Actually, here it is, you know, who helped me is adjective clause and it is qualifying this noun because the function of adjective clause is to qualify some noun and pronoun. So, here actually, this relative pronoun who helped me, this is actually adjective clause and it has qualified the boy, right? So, the noun and pronoun which is qualified is called antecedent and here it is relative. And here, one thing you need to understand that this antecedent and relative pronoun they are placed you know close to each other very close adjacent to each other this you need to make sure right so now you have understood what is this a relative pronoun now I must tell you that what type of question comes 
from relative pronoun. What we have seen, who, let me show one thing with who and the other way. Fine. See, this is the boy whom I help. See here. Here it is who. Because you know, this is the boy whom I help. And this is here is an objective case. And next we can say, this is the boy whose father is a farmer. Fine? So whose is here is in possessive case. And here it is antecedent. Fine? So some of the examples I have shown you. Now, next thing is there that what comes in the exam. How do we understand that from the relative pronoun what comes? This is the some general information I have given you about relative pronoun. But now I need to tell you that from relative pronoun what type of question comes in the exam. So let us see now that. So in the competitive exam, you know, the question which comes that is the use of that over who and which. Sometimes when there is supposed to be used who which they are we will use that okay that means generally a place where who is supposed to be used and where which is supposed to be used in that place there is used that and from here the question comes in the exam that means use of use of that in place of in place of who and which Try to understand food. This is the topic and from here the question comes in the cognitive exam. That means the place where we are supposed to use who and the place where we are supposed to use which, they are, we are going to use that. So from here the question comes. So number one, condition is there with superlative sentences. Superlative degree sentences. That means if there is a sentence and the sentence is in superlative form and if in that sentence there is actually the use of which and who so we will not use which and who we will use that. See example Example is uh, This is This is the best book That this is the best book that I have ever read. See children. Since this is the best book, this is in superlative degree. That's why here I have used that. Here you cannot use which. If you use which, which is going to be wrong. Otherwise, we are, you know, we feel like using which because there actually there should come which. You know, there should come which here. Because, you know, we feel like generally if this rule is not it is not, it will not apply, that means here we are supposed to use which, but here we are using that because the sentence is in superlative form. Now in another sentence, if in sentence there are words like same, any, all, nothing, only, the only. Listen, if these words are there. If these words are there in the sentence like same, any, all, nothing, only, the, only, and that means in where we are supposed to use who and which, they are going to use that. Let us see how all that glitters is not good. See, here we are supposed to actually there should have been which. But here we are using that because this word all is named on this. Next. This is the same book. This is the same book that I saw yesterday. See here. Since in the sentence there is same and that's why I have used here that. Because this same word is here, what does it say? The rule says if in a sentence 
दे सेम एनी ऑल नथिंग ओनली द ओनली दैट मींस वी आर सपोज टू यूज दैट फाइंड्स वन एंड टू इज ओवर देयर टू मोर देयर टू मोर वेयर वी आर सपोज टू यूज दैट एंड नॉट व्हिच और हु राइट सो थर्ड नंबर इज Antecedent, I have told you. Antecedent, I have told you that the word which comes before relative is called antecedent. Now we use that when there are two antecedents, right? There are two antecedents. So one is human being, the other is animal. So for the two antecedents, we always use that. In when there are two. antecedents that is one is human and the other the other is animal fine so we use that listen see the man and his dog that entered the school That at the school were turned out. See here, children. Here, the man and his dog. This is antecedent. Generally, in a sentence, there is only one antecedent, but here there are two antecedents: the man and the dog. That's why relative I use that. Is that clear? So this rule said that when there are two antecedents in a sentence. And the antecedent one is human being, and the other is animal. So for that we use for that we use that as a relative. Fine. Now one more in interrogative sentence. Interrogative. Interrogative where who and what. If your sentence is interrogative and if it starts with who and what, so there we also use to suppose. Where there we are also suppose. That how see here. Who was the boy that came to your house? See here, children. Since the sentence is interrogative, started with who, and that's why here I have used you know that. Otherwise, in normal use, here we cannot use that. Here we have to use. You know which because we are choosing out of many words. But since it is a derivative sentence, start with who, so that's why we are using that. What who is there? What is? What what is it that you want? See the sentence since it has started with what, and that's why I have used that. Is that clear? So in this rule, what we have discussed here, we have discussed that. We are supposed to use that and not who and which under four conditions. Is that clear? All these four conditions are clear. Now, in this relative pronoun, I will use one more thing. I have told you children that who is for you know nominative case and who is for objective case, who is for possessive case for the living beings. This is who's possessive case for. human being and of which of which is what of which is you know possessive case for non living things how see i saw i saw the watch of i saw the watch the dial of which the dial of which was of gold see here i cannot say i saw the watch i but i saw the watch the dial of which here i cannot say who because the dial is a the watch is a non living thing so that's why here i am supposed to use of which and not who is that clear children So here, today in this particular video, what have we seen? We have seen two of the very confusing pronouns. 
that is the difference of reflexive and emphatic pronoun we have seen and then i have also told you that what type of question comes from reflexive and emphatic pronoun and the second one we have seen you know relative pronoun is that clear children so today i think you know i won't say that pronoun is all over there are still many other points but so far for the competitive exams for the ndf clad exams on pronoun i have made three lectures and i have tried to covered all those points from where from which areas you know generally the questions are out is that clear so just revise all these three see all these three lectures and keep the points and i think you won't ever fail if some question is asked from the pronoun chapter is that clear thank you and god bless you